HS50. that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue for the reading now. Chapter 16 
These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yea, the time cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doeth God's service. And these things will they do unto you, because they have not known the Father, nor me. But these things have I told you, that when the time shall come, ye may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said not unto you at the beginning, because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me. And none of you asketh me, Whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow hath filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin, and of righteousness, and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more. Of judgment, because the Prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again a little while, and ye shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then said some of his disciples among themselves, What is this that he saith unto us? A little while, and ye shall not see me. And again a little while, and ye shall see me. And because I go to the Father. They said therefore, what is this that he saith, a little while? We cannot tell what he saith. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him, and said unto them, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said, A little while, and ye shall not see me, and again a little while, and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, I say unto you, that ye shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, hath sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembereth no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And ye now therefore have sorrow. But I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man taketh from you. And in that day ye shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it you. Hitherto have ye asked nothing in my name. Ask, and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and am come into the world. Again I leave the world, and go to the Father. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly, and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things, and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. Jesus answered them, Do ye now believe? Behold, the hour cometh, yea, is now come, that ye shall be scattered every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, 
an instruction to obey, a promise to claim, pray for grace that you will do as you have learned in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray.
it and his name was changed sarah experienced it and she got laughter moses experienced it and he went from hiding to leading david experienced it and became god's beloved elijah experienced it and brought down fire a savior has come to you a healer has come to you a deliverer has come to you a redeemer has come to you you will not miss your miracle now it's your time experience the supernatural in this month's global crusade themed the glorious visitation of christ happening live in ghana god is ready to move also featuring our ministers church workers and professional conference team enabling grace and power for the end time harvest the youth aren't left behind as they are moving upward to higher height with the impact academy join us from the 28th to 25th of april at independence square osu accra the word of power would be broadcast worldwide through satellite radio tv and the GCK social media platforms. We will be blessed by glorious music from choirs around the world. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Glory to Tonight, the Lord has come to visit you. His peace will come to you. Purity of heart will come to you. The power of the Holy Ghost will come to you. We come to talk about the kingdom of peace. And about the Prince of Peace. 
In his kingdom, there is peace. In his kingdom, there is purity. In his kingdom, there is power. And all the three combined gives us a powerful life. A life that he himself touches and he turns you around. The crusade is not just, uh, you know, to come together and have excitement. The crusade is supposed to give us a change of life. A turning around in your life. That the peace will be real. The peace will touch every part of your relationship. <clears throat> It'll touch your heart. It'll touch your soul. It'll affect your behavior. It will affect everything in your life. And so please, as we come, and Christ is here, the Prince of Peace. As we come to him, he gives us peace in our heart. Peace in our soul. Peace in our body. And then you know that purity is of the Lord. Follow peace with all men. And holiness, peace, and holiness, peace, and purity. The sacrifice of Jesus on the cross of Calvary. It's not cheap, it's not superficial. That's the sacrifice that brings to us purity of heart, holiness of life. And it also gives us healing and deliverance. And so as you are here today, something definite must happen in your body, in your life, in your soul, in your spirit. <clears throat> And the power to do everything we're created to do. The power to live, the power to achieve. And the power to be everything we ought to be in life, in the kingdom. God gives us that power. And tonight, tonight will be your night. The miracle of peace, the miracle of purity, the miracle of power, the miracle of healing, the miracle of deliverance. It'll accomplish everything in your life tonight in Jesus' name. Are you there? Let me see your hand raised up. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we well, thank you and bless your name. You are the God that cannot fail. You are the God of peace. The God of holiness and purity. And the God of all power and strength. Visit everyone here tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that you'll do great, mighty things in our lives. This is not good for me. We should raise it up. Lord, we pray that everything you ought to do in every life, you will do in our life tonight in Jesus' name. You'll be glorified in every life. In Jesus' name we pray. <laughs> God bless you. You can sit down. Tonight we are coming to an important scripture. Powerful scripture. A transforming scripture. We are coming to the Bible. And we are looking at these two verses to start with. These are the verses that come into our lives. They touch our lives. They transform our lives. And then heaven comes within our soul. 
And tonight, it comes inside us, lives in us, works in us, and transforms our lives. Tonight, we're coming to Isaiah chapter 9. And I'm reading from verse 6 and verse 7. Isaiah chapter 6. Reading from tonight from verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. It's talking about Jesus Christ. A child is born. What joy we have that Jesus Christ the Savior, that Jesus Christ the healer, that Jesus Christ the redeemer, that Jesus Christ the sanctifier that makes us holy, Jesus Christ the power of God in man, a child is born. Unto us a son is given. That's the son of God. That's the son of man. He came from heaven, son of God. He came to earth, son of man. So that he can make the sons of men to become the sons of God. He came from on high. He came down below on earth so that earthly people can become heavenly people. So that the weak children of men can become the strong children of God. So that the, down the downtrodden and the weak and the fleshly can become spiritual. So that those who are born of the flesh will now be born of the spirit. In short, so that a transformation, a change will happen in every life. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And then it says, the government shall be upon a shoulder. It's a ruler. He comes to reign. And when you receive him, you receive the ruler that reigns in your life. And when he reigns in your life, every other power will crumble and come down. When Christ, the one that comes to govern, when he comes to reign in your life, and the government of your life, the control of your life, the leadership of your life, comes upon his shoulder. He even makes you a ruler yourself. All the things that ruled against your life, over your life before, he throws them away and then you rule over them in Jesus' name. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God. The God that is able to do all things. Mighty to save. Mighty to heal. Mighty to deliver. Mighty to sanctify and purify. Mighty to empower you so that you will have the victory in every area of your life. The mighty God, the everlasting Father. Everlasting. He takes you from earth and he takes you to eternity. The peace he gives you tonight. From earth to eternity. The purity, the holiness of life, he gives you tonight from earth to eternity. 
the strength and the power that he gives you tonight, the might and the wonders that he gives you tonight from earth to eternity. And then he says, the Prince of Peace. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, he tells us of, his, of the increase of his kingdom. Uh, when you come to Christ, and the control of your life is given to Christ. When you come to Christ, and the government of your life is in Christ's hand. That government of your life will continue to increase and increase. Its control over your life will continue to increase and increase. Its power in your life will continue to increase and increase. And we don't just come to the crusade and then we have peace temporarily. And then a week after the crusade, all the peace is gone. All the healing is gone. All the manifestation of his power gone. It increases in our lives. Of the increase of his kingdom. And peace. There shall be no end. That is, we we'll continue with him. He continues with us. The peace comes in and the peace continues. The purity, the holiness comes in and it continues. The power comes in. He mercies us in his power. He surrounds us with his power. He infills us with his power. And it does not just begin, it continues in our lives. Of the increase of his kingdom, of his government. And peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David. And upon his kingdom to order it. To order it. When Christ comes to your life, all disorderliness will vanish away. Your life will be straightforward. Your life will be orderly. Your life will be seamless from day to day, from week to week, from month to month. He orders your step. He orders your speech. He orders your action. He orders every part of your life. It becomes orderly. And to establish it with judgment and justice. From henceforth, even forever. And then it says, The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. The passion of the Lord, the, the interest of the Lord, and everything He has, His purpose will fulfill that in your life. Peace will be fulfilled in your life. Give me a good, good amen. Purity will continue in your life. Another amen. Power will continue in your life. It says, it's the zeal of the Lord of hosts that will perform this. Tonight I want to talk to you on great wonders through the Prince of Peace. Great wonders. You see that one that there is in the plural. 
They want our peace. They want our purity. They want our power. They want our healing. They want our deliverance. They want of the fulfillment of all the promises of God in your life. Great wonders through the Prince of Peace. We're looking at three things here in the message. Number one, the prophetic perpetual government of peace. Is prophesied. That's the prophecy we read in Isaiah. And it is precious. The prophetic perpetual government of peace. Number two, the present precious goodness of the prince. Our prince. The one that came from heaven to set up his kingdom in our hearts and set up the kingdom in our families and set up the kingdom in our nations. He has present goodness to distribute to everyone. He has precious goodness to distribute to everyone. The present precious goodness of the prince. Number three, the pardoning plenteous grace for all people. There's grace available for everyone today. The grace that brings the peace of God in our lives. The grace that brings the purity and the holiness and the sanctity of life to everyone that believes. The grace that brings the power of heaven on earth to the heart and life of man. Grace brings peace. Grace brings purity. Grace brings power. The pardoning, plenteous grace for all people. Look at number one. Number one is the prophetic, perpetual government of peace. Look at Zechariah chapter 9, verse 9. He says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. Lowly and riding upon an ass. And upon the coat, the foam of an ass. You see one word there in the middle of that verse. The word salvation. Salvation. Now when we talk of salvation, you understand salvation? Somebody has been going on a journey. All of a sudden, he had an accident. And the vehicle was reaching up. He was bleeding profusely. He would have died. But somebody came and took him up and took care of him. And his life has been preserved. In life, morally, in life, financially, in life, humanly speaking, as we journey through life, we come to an accident. Sin caused the accident. Our life would have been useless like we are a dead person. 
And now somebody with a capital S. Somebody, the Savior. Somebody, the Lamb of God. Somebody that came to save us. He saved us from perishing. He saved us from dying the final death to go to hell. He saved us from perdition. That is the one prophesied to take over the government of our lives. It happens at the moment you turn away from your sin and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He is just and is the justifier. You are guilty. You are condemned. You add the punishment and the sentence of death upon your life. Heaven looks at you as a dead sinner. You were not alive to righteousness. And you didn't have peace. You didn't have peace with God. You didn't have peace in yourself. You didn't have peace with anybody. But now Christ came. Is the one prophesied to take over the government of your life. And he comes in as the Prince of Peace. And he gives you peace. He gives your heart peace. There is peace in your soul. There is peace in the inner man. There is peace all around you. And you will not be the originator of violence, of strife, of fighting. Because the Prince of Peace has come to your life. And because the peace is there, you will not be the originator. You will not be the transmitter. You will not be the one that sends confusion, commotion, strife, pride, evil, discomfort in the life of anyone around you. That salvation. When the peace of God comes to your heart. And anywhere you are, you're a peacemaker now. Anywhere you are, you love peace. You're excited that peace is reigning in your community. And if you have been at loggerheads, at, at a kind of a confusion and fighting, commotion with anybody, when that Christ, the Prince of Peace, comes to your heart, you will reconcile with people around you and they'll have peace with you and you'll have peace with them. That the evidence salvation has come to you. If somebody says, I have salvation, and he's still fighting with his neighbor, that's not the evidence of salvation. If somebody says, I have salvation, and he's still drinking, and then the drinking turns his brain and he begins to fight again, that's not the evidence of salvation. If somebody says, I have salvation, and he's still in the habit of being pugnacious, angry, fighting everybody, that's not the evidence of salvation. The evidence of salvation is that you have repented. The evidence of salvation is that you believe in the Prince of Peace. The evidence of salvation is that the peace of God and the peace of Christ now reigns in your heart. And tonight, that salvation is available for you. 
Amen. It comes in. It comes with peace you have never known. It comes with peace you have never experienced. There's peace in your heart. There's love in your heart. Now you have peace and you love everyone around. And the people you are fighting with, when the Prince of Peace enters your heart, you will go to them to ask for their forgiveness, and they will also ask for forgiveness. There will be forgiveness and reconciliation. There will be peace between you if the Prince of Peace that brings salvation enters into your life. And all the fighting nature, all that is cancelled from your life. The pugnacious uh, nature, all that is cancelled from your life. You're so happy to live with other people. And if between you and your wife, between you and your husband, they have been fighting, fighting, tearing one another's clothes and getting angry, when salvation comes and when the Savior comes to your life, all that fighting is over. Husband and wife will sit down. They look at one another face to face and then all the ribs of the past, everything is removed and now there is peace in the heart and peace in the home. That is the evidence that salvation has come, that peace has come in your heart, in your home. The prophecy talks about perpetual government of peace in our lives. Anyway, you are when salvation comes, everybody will know that this man is saved, that woman is saved. Hey, look at point number two here. Point number two is the present precious goodness of the prince. You already know now that Christ is that prince of peace. When he rules anywhere, when he reigns in any heart, he brings the goodness of heaven in our heart. He brings the goodness of heaven into the home. That peace and all the things, the provision of the Prince of Peace will come to your heart today. You miss an amen there. In your heart, he'll bring the provision of heaven. Remember, the provision of heaven is not just salvation. He gives us salvation. He gives us sanctification. He gives us the power of the Holy Ghost. Whichever you have got will be permanent in Jesus' name. Whichever you have not got, maybe you are saved, maybe you are born again, but the purity of heart is not there. And hypocrisy is trying to enter your life. And the old life is, enter, is trying to re-enter your life. And the thoughtlessness of action not thinking about what you do, and that's why child of God now, that thoughtlessness of action is trying to re-enter your life. We have salvation. We have sanctification, holiness. And as we believe more and more in the Lord, purity will come. Sanctification will come. Holiness will come. Give me a good, good amen. 
And it is Christ with his goodness that brings all that in our lives. Peace, purity, power. Power. Somebody shout power. Uh, you know, the, the, the followers of Christ, they're not anemic. They're not spineless. They're not powerless. The goodness of God that the Prince of Peace brings includes power. And it says, I give unto you power. It will give you power tonight. I said he'll give you power tonight. Because that is part of his goodness. The present precious goodness of the prince. Look at Acts chapter 5 verse 30. Acts chapter 5 verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. You know the story. He was born in Bethlehem. He lived and healed and delivered people all through the land of Israel. Then he was crucified on the cross for our sin. He was buried. On the third day, he rose from the dead. And then, when he rose from the dead, he now presented himself before his apostles, before his servants. That's what he's saying here, that God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Whom ye slew on hand on a tree. Look at verse 31. Him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince. To be our prince. And this is not the prince that will take something from the citizens and give nothing back. Everything the subjects, the citizens of the kingdom, everything they need, our prince has and he possesses everything. He has peace. He gives us. He gives you. I said he gives you. When you receive. Tonight, you were receiving Jesus' name. And Christ has healing. He is our healer. And when we come to him, whatever the challenge, he heals us. Tonight is the night of opening blind eyes. It's the night of deaf and dumb hearing and speaking. It's the night of every swelling getting out of your body. It's the night of the healing of cancer. The night of the healing of ulcer. It's the night of every sickness, every infirmity getting out of your life. He will heal you tonight. The prince has peace. It will give you. He has healing. It will give you. He has purity. It will give you. If your life had been soiled, if your life had been dirty, if your life had been totally deformed because of sin, because of evil, our prince has the purity tonight, it will give unto you. The world in which we live has kind of 
intimidated everyone even so-called christians they tremble and they are anemic they don't have any backbone they cannot carry out their conviction they don't have power but tonight somebody shout tonight power will come to you i said power will come to you Our prince has all goodness. Salvation available. Sanctification available. Recovery from sickness available. And strength available for everyone. You will get your own. You get the salvation of the Lord. You get the peace of the Lord. You get the healing of the Lord. Him as God exalted with his right hand. To be a prince and a savior. For to give repentance to Israel and the forgiveness of sins. Tonight, he will give you what he has brought from heaven. Psalm 145, 145. We're looking at verse 9. In Psalm 145, verse 9, the Lord is good to all. Everyone here tonight, everyone online, any continent, any country, any nation where you are. The Lord is good to all. The Lord will be good to you tonight. What you ask him, the salvation of your soul, the forgiveness of your sin, the freedom from all the sins that tied you down before. The Lord is good to all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. The work of creation. He created you over all his works. The work of redemption. He redeems you. And his goodness is over all. And his tender mercies are over all his works. Uh, look at verse 19. In verse 19, he will fulfill the desire of him that of them that fear him. We fear him. We love him. We reverence him. We think of him. We want to do his will. Only we didn't have the power to do that will. Now we come to him, the prince. And then he has mercy on us. And then he gives us his goodness. Everyone that calls on the name of the Lord, he will give his goodness. He also will hear their cry and will save them. Salvation here tonight. What are you? Salvation. Salvation. He will save you tonight in Jesus' name. And then when we are saved, we don't go away from the Savior empty-handed, every empty-headed and empty-hearted. Salvation brings something. Salvation does not leave us the way we were before the salvation. If any man, if any woman be in Christ, if he's saved, he becomes a new creature. Where there was no peace before, peace will come. 
where there was no righteousness before, righteousness will come. Where there was a dirty life before, a clean life will come. That's when salvation enters in from the prince. Look at that person. It's coming out from the prince. And then I come his way. And I say, my friend, where have you been? He says, I went to the prince. I said, what did he give you? He said, nothing. Ah, you didn't get to the prince. I said, did he give you any good thing? I said, Pastor, nothing. I said, you didn't visit the king. I see somebody saying, I've been to the prince of peace. And then I come across him. And I said, my friend, where are you coming from? I went to see the Prince of Peace. I believe in the Prince of Peace. I bow to the Prince of Peace. I said, what did he give you? He said, nothing. Didn't give you peace? No, Pastor. Didn't give you purity? No, Pastor. Didn't give you power? No, Pastor. Didn't even give you healing? No, Pastor. As I went into the prince with my bad character, with my bad lifestyle, I came out from the prince. He gave me nothing. You didn't get to the prince, the one we're talking about. When you come to the prince of peace, he has abundance of peace to give unto you. Your life will be different. Your heart will be different. All the confusion and commotion and violence and brutality and cruelty in your life before you met the prince, everything will vanish away. I met the prince. He gave me peace. Some years ago now, I, I used to love fighting. If there was no fight, I will instigate and I will initiate one. In my class at that time in the secondary school, there were people that were much heftier and taller and bigger than myself. And I see, I can see it in my mind side now. And he'll be standing there. And I'll call his name. I'll say something that will provoke him. I won't tell him to fight because everything has been quiet. And then a fight will begin. And then I met the prince. The prince of peace. His peace came to my heart. Fighting, I could not do anymore. Even the people that lick up and wipe off before. When they say something that will start a fight, I'll say, please, don't vex, don't fight. New life has come. That's what happened to me. It's the evidence I made the Prince of Peace. Violence gone. Initiating a fight gone. All those evil things gone. And then I got to the Prince again. I said, I've got peace. I want purity. Purity of heart, holiness of life, and of course, healing for my body. He gave me that too. And then I went back again because the provision of the prince is inexhaustible. Peace, purity, 
when I was alone by myself, with nobody watching over me, with nobody asking me, why are you doing that? The purity was there. And then, but I wanted power. Not power to fight people. Power to fight the devil, overcome the devil. That's the real power we need. The power to overcome sickness. The power to overcome satanic force. The power to be quit for what he has called us to do on earth. I went back to him again. I said, thank you, Lord, for peace. Thank you, Lord, for purity. Now power. I can tell you the date. I can tell you the time. I can tell you the place where the power came. And then God began to use me. The Lord will begin to use you. But you'll pray. You'll repent. You'll come to the Lord. What he has made of me, he will make of you. Who am I talking to there? Peace. Purity. Power. It will fulfill in your life in Jesus' name. I come to number three now. Number three is the patterning plenteous grace for all people. The grace that pardons us. The grace that purifies us. The grace that empowers us. The grace that heals us. The grace that delivered us. The pardoning of plenteous grace for all people. Look at Psalm 130, 130. And I'm reading there from verse 7. Let Israel hope in the Lord. Let the brother there, my sister there, my daughter there, my son there, let everyone hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. Plenteous redemption. Plural redemption. Present redemption. Precious redemption. Heaven sent redemption. It's in that redemption we have peace. In that redemption we have purity. In that redemption we have power. In that redemption we have all possibilities. With him is plenteous redemption. Look at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, And he shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. It takes away iniquity. It takes away sin. He purges us. He pardons us of the pollution of sin in our lives. He takes away the power of sin from our lives. If somebody is caught stealing. He said, I didn't want to. Something overpowered me. I couldn't help myself. That's why I did it. When you meet the prince and he redeems you from all iniquity, I can't help it, all that will vanish away. 
he comes to live inside you. And all the sins and the iniquities of the past, he breaks the power of sin away from your life. And then the pollution of sin that made you feel dirty. And the remembrance of those sins, they bring some pollution into your mind. It cleanses you, it washes you, and even all that pollution, it takes away. Pollution of sin taken away. The power of sin broken and destroyed. And then the punishment for sin, it takes that away again. So that what you should have been punished for, punished on earth and punished in hellfire. When you come to reconcile with the Lord, when you come to give your life completely and fully to the Lord, and the Prince of Peace sets its government in your heart, all the punishment of past sins will blot everything away. If you don't have the prince, you will not have the forgiveness. If you don't have the prince, you will not have the salvation. If you are only religious, traditionally religious, habitually religious, and you come to the crusade like you have come tonight, and you continue in the tradition of religion without meeting the prince of peace and there's no peace and there's no pardon if you died in that condition you will bear your punishment in hell fire forever and ever it is meeting the savior Giving our hearts to the Savior. Giving our lives to the Savior. It is that that brings the pardon. And the pollution of sin is wiped away. And the power of sin is broken and destroyed. And the punishment of sin is lifted away from you. And you are free for time and eternity. He shall redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Tonight he'll do it for you. I said tonight he'll do it for you. Micah chapter 7 verse 18. Micah chapter 7 verse 18 Who is a God like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity? Who is a God like unto thee? Who is a Savior like unto thee? Who is a Prince like unto thee that pardoneth iniquity? And passes by the transgression of the remnant of his heritage. And retaineth not his anger forever. Because he delighteth in mercy. Look at verse 19. In verse 19, he will turn again. He, he, he will have compassion upon us. He will subdue our iniquities. And thou will cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. As you come to the Prince of Peace tonight, and he pardons you, and he forgives you, and he sets you free 
and wipes away all the remnant of sin from your life. He'll bundle all your sins together. He will put them in the depths of the sea. They will not surface again to bring you condemnation. New life, new heart, a new pursuit in your life. He's going to do it now. Who is going to receive? I said he's going to do it now. Who is going to receive? Who is going to receive pardon? Who is going to receive forgiveness? Who is going to receive a new life? A purified life. A powerful life. That when the instigator, originator of sin, when he knocks at your door, you say, in Jesus' name, it will run back from you. The Lord is ready for you. Are you ready for him? We will now. Are you ready for him? Yes, we're ready. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Grace will come into your life. Peace will come into your life. A new strength will come into your life. You will know the prince has touched your heart, has touched your life. What you didn't have before, the peace of God, you will have. It's bowed and eyes closed. It's bowed and eyes closed. You need pardon. You need peace. You need a new relationship with the Lord by the Prince of Peace. Without it, you are not of God. Without it, God is not for you. So, if you want to have the peace of God now, the pardon of your sin now and you want him to bundle all your sins till now bundle everything together and cast to the depths of the sea this is your chance and if you are having that that peace and that pardon that forgiveness and that freedom wherever you are you raise up your hand You are saying, I need your pardon. To pardon all my sins. I need your peace. That there will be no confusion, condemnation in my heart, in my life anymore. Raise up your hand there. Raise it up very well. And then if you are raising up your hand, you will stand up. You are indicating to heaven. You are indicating to the Lord. I need peace. I need pardon. I want condemnation to go away. I want all the habitual overpowering strength of sin to be demolished out of my life. Peace and pardon. Now you can rise up where you are and invite Christ, the Prince of Peace, in your heart, in your life. Stand up there. And then as you stand up, pray to the Lord and say, Lord, I'm sorry for all the past evil things I've done for my strife for my violence for my cruelty 
for my thoughtless life. Lord, I surrender. I give myself unto thee. Forgive me. Say that from the death of your heart. Change my life. Turn my life around. Raise up that hand and stand up. I'm praying for you now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for your provision for everyone. Thank you for the peace you provide for everyone. Thank you for forgiveness and pardon you provide for everyone. You said, whosoever covers up his sin shall not prosper. But he who confesses and forsakes them, having faith in the Lord, will have mercy. All those who have abandoned their sin, all those who have repented of their evil, and they want the grace and the peace of God in their hearts. I pray, Lord, forgive them, pardon them in Jesus' name. Change their lives. Transform their lives. And let the peace of God and the pardon from the Lord settle in their hearts right now. Purge their lives. Take the interest of evil things away from their heart. Give them the power to live an overcoming life. Confirm each in every life right now. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, yeah. You can do better than that. Let me hear your amen. Yeah. Amen, amen. Our counselors are there with you now. They will give you sleeves where you feel your details so that we'll know you had had a genuine repentance and faith in the Lord. Our national overseer will help us now. Glory to you. Praise the Lord. Glory to you. Praise the Lord. Soyez les bienvenus dans le royaume de Dieu. You are welcome into the kingdom of God. Vous tous qui avez donné votre vie au Seigneur. All of you who have just given your life to the Lord. Vous aurez des conseillers qui ne sont pas loin de vous. You have counselors that are not far from you. Ils vont pouvoir vous uh, inscrire sur une fiche que vous allez remplir. To help you to fill the forms you have. S'il vous plaît, Please. donnez les, les les adresses les plus correctes. Give them the exact information of your address. Votre nom. Your name. Et le lieu de votre résidence. And your residence, your residential area. Nous vous prions de ne pas donner de fausses adresses. We pray not to give false information. Ceci est nécessaire pour que nous puissions avoir l'amabilité de, de vous suivre jusqu'à maturité dans le royaume de Dieu. This gives us the possibility to follow you up into maturity in the kingdom of God. Les conseillers, s'il vous plaît. Counsel us, please. Approchez-vous de ces convertis. Go nearer to these converts. Certains qui ne savent pas écrire, aidez-les pour those, pouvoir écrire. Those who don't know how to write, help them to write. Et ceux qui savent écrire, nous vous prions de bien vouloir écrire des détails en lettres majuscules. And those who can write well, we are praying with you 
to do so in capital letters. Et pour nos amis qui, sont, qui nous suivent sur les réseaux sociaux, on voici euh, le lien que vous allez suivre pour pouvoir euh, nous envoyer euh, votre nom et votre coordonnées complètes. And for our friends who are following up in the social media, this is the link we are going to give you to fill your correct address. gckhq.org gckhq.org gck gckhq.org Et pour nos amis qui nous suivent sur la radio et la télévision for friends who are following up in the radio and television vous pouvez nous envoyer vos adresses vos noms par lequel vous auquel vous répondez you can send your address and your numbers where we can follow you le nom auquel vous répondez the name which you answer et par lequel les gens autour de vous vous connaissent the name by which people around you know you notre numéro de whatsapp Our WhatsApp number plus 234 plus 234 915 915 444 444 92 92 63 63 Nous reprenons. I take it again. Plus 234, plus 234, 915, 915, 444, 444, 92, 92, 63, 63. Allons vite. Call be rapid. Parce que le moment que vous espérez le plus s'approche. Because the moment you are desiring the most is approaching. Les conseillers, s'il vous plaît, dépêchons-nous. Counselors, please may hurry up. En attendant le moment où notre pasteur reprendra la séance, prions à l'intérieur que le Seigneur fasse pour nous ce que nous désirons ce soir. Come to the moment where our pastor is going to pray on the interior. You desire what the Lord wants to do in your life tonight. Les conseillers, dépêchez-vous pour que nous puissions suivre la prière de l'homme de Dieu. Counsel us, hurry up, that we may follow the prayers of the man of God. Nous avons à vous annoncer les, les petites annonces uh, comme suit. We have some of the following announcements. Il y aura les déjeuners avec Jésus. To be the lunch hour with Jesus. Ce, ce, ça aura lieu à 14h30. 
That will be by 2.30. Et dans la salle de la conférence. In the conference hall. La conférence ici où à l'ordinaire les le programme des pasteurs, des ministres de la parole et des ouvriers de l'église se tiennent. The conference hall where the ministers conference for leaders our workers are, is holding. Et cette uh, uh, salle de conférence se trouve uh, ici à ma gauche. And that conference hall is found here adjacent on our left. Tu juste derrière le ca, la cabine des équipements just behind the major house. Et de deux nous avons un banquet spécial. Number two, we have a special banquet. Un banquet spécial en ligne. A special online banquet. Qui sera organisé le 2 avril 2023. Organized on the 2nd April 2023. Auquel le pasteur, le surintendant général et l'ange de l'église, vie profonde, à l'honneur de vous y être invité. Where the GS, the general of a, a general superintendent, who have the desire to invite you. Veuillez garder l'écoute pour plus de précision. So just be on the alert for more precision. Pour ce qui concerne nous ici. Gloire à Dieu. Nous nous levons pour la prière. Are you ready for your miracle? Miracle coming your way. Healing coming your way. Your deliverance is coming your way. The prince has goodness. And a lot of blessings in that goodness. There is healing there. The deliverance there. There is power to turn your life around in the goodness of the prince. Blind eyes will open. Deaf and dumb will hear and speak. The swelling will get out of your body. That pile will vanish away. The issue of blood will dry up. Paralysis will vanish away. Whatever miracle or healing you need is available today. Where are you? Raise up that hand and say, Lord, here I am. I need the miracle now. And when you hear the final amen, you check up yourself, you see it is done. Ready? Raise up that hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord Jesus, you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Your healing power never fails. Your deliverance is never delayed. And Lord, we come up here for everyone. Everyone here, everyone online, everyone in every nation. Lord, we come to you right now. Touch everyone in Jesus name all those who are sick touch them heal them in Jesus name whatever the sickness whatever disease I command you come out in Jesus name perform the miracle now. 
Effect the healing now. Manifest the deliverance now. At the time of the final amen, all the sicknesses, all the infirmities, all the problems, all the mountains are gone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done. I said it is done. You can check up yourself. You'll find your miracle is right there. If you couldn't see before, open your eyes. Now you can see. If you were lame, rise up and walk. Whatever challenge you had before, look at yourself now. God has given the miracle to you. God bless you.